Turn that phone off, please. Break-off shot from John Higgins. Not the best one, but that's the first time I've seen two players come back in the arena in the, just near the end of a match and get a stand innovation. Not on the black. Mark Williams won. Well, that pot success rate for both players. When you consider they've played 33 frames, is an incredible standard. John Higgins had been so relieved when Mark Williams spotted that first red that he didn't land on the black. I think these two players, John, will be virtually immune from pressure tonight. <laughs> well, I think it's just the attitude they've shown all through the match. They've looked for a, a ball to pot to win the frame. That's why we've had quick frames, average time, less than 16 minutes. As you said in the last frame, it's been proper snooker all the way through. Great advert for our game. And that's a bonus. That's a bonus for Mark Williams. Didn't hit that safety shot too well. And that considered it was a good shot from John Higgins, not much else he could do. It's a possible pot to the right middle. You wouldn't put it past Mark Williams to take it on if he considers that the only red he could leave was the one he was playing. And maybe there's another one to the right middle. Eight. Oh, another chance. Nine. Another good chance to wrap up this championship. It's been like a boxing match this tonight. Punch for punch. Sixteen. That red going in Seven. still needs another 50 points at this visit to get to snookers required. Not a formality by any means. I'm a little bit short with that one. 24. Oh no, perfectly played. And the blue's not a bad colour, colour actually, to play for these two loose reds, either side of the pack. Oh, this red and Third. the red closest to the cue ball. The last open reds. Mm, may have the Third choice now to go into the pink. He's got a perfect angle in the blue. Big shot. Decided to play it gently. But he's got a red to continue with. He's got a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. 36. But a, just a couple of good positional shots away from clinching this. Played it well, played a nice bit of right hand 37. side just to check it on the black. Uh, what a position now. I think he's got three reds he can play for here. 
or three words he can land on. So there you see 45. it, 45 ahead. You'd say three reds, three high value colours. 45. And he'd be over the winning line. But after what happened in the last frame, nobody will take anything for granted. No, he missed one of these earlier on, and it cost him the frame. 52. He's got to strike this well. Screwing back for the black. And he struck it beautifully. 53. Yeah, smooth as silk that one. There was no jabbing on that one. But he's not got the great angle on the black. And he doesn't really want to play for the red along the top cushion because it's missable. But has he any other option? No, he's having to play for the tricky red. This red and a black. And John Higgins will need a snooker. 60. Pressure, what pressure? 61. Still needs the black. Uh, and this time, uh, no mistake. Well, what a performance from Mark Williams to put behind him the fact that he should have won it the frame before. Nothing John Higgins can do now. He requires one snooker, but if this red goes in, that will be the end. And right in the heart of the pocket. No emotion yet from Mark. 69. Emotion from the family. And Mark, I'm sure inside. And John Higgins resigned now to defeat. But what a performance from John Higgins. He's missed the black. Mark Williams. I'm sorry, 69. the brown. I'm getting confused here. Well. I don't think he can quite believe he missed the brown. Quiet down, no, please, thank you. I think after he hit it, he got up and thought, did I really miss that? Just shows you. He was trying, it seemed like he was trying to keep his emotions in check and just completely lost focus. Now, John Higgins... Quiet down, please. ...in thank effect, you. needs three four-point snookers. Wasn't easy. Oh. And played it as a shot for nothing. Well, just have to suffer a bit more. I mean, obviously, John Higgins needing three snookers, and Mark Williams knows his way around the table better than most. It seems like a almost impossible task, but you never know. Yeah, just to take an extra couple of deep breaths, Mark Williams, just to get this over the line. But he'll be feeling incredible. Right in the heart of the pocket. Oh. Puff of the cheeks. John Higgins will not be coming back to the table now except to shake his hand and congratulate him. What a match, what a performance. John Higgins gets out of his seat, claps his hand, says, well played, and the family go berserk. Mark Williams, he was going to get up four years ago, but he's now back in the big time. John Higgins giving it his all. But in the end, Mark Williams was just too strong, and Mark Williams becomes the 2018 Betfred World Snooker Champion for the third time. Ladies and gentlemen, please, 
everyone already upstanding, but let's hear it one more time for one of the most magnificent finals we have ever witnessed. <laughs> John, this is not the outcome that you had pictured, but you have played your part here this evening. At what guts, what bottle, to pull that 65 out to go 16-17 tonight? Can you sum up your feelings at being part of this incredible occasion? Yeah, um, an unbelievable occasion. Great to play in front of this crowd again, playing an unbelievable player in Mark. Uh, the red that he's potted in the last frame there was just a joke, really. Uh, <laughs> especially under the pressure that, that, that I probably put him under. and he, he went in and done, done one of the best breaks under pressure I've ever seen, so every credit to him. Brilliant. John, it's... John, I know you were chasing a fifth title, but this is a seventh World Championship final, 20 years after your first one. Yeah. I wonder how much pride you can take in staying the course here and still starring on this stage two decades later. Yeah, listen. Today I'm 13-7 behind. I was, I just, I was wanting to actually take it to a fourth session. Really, I didn't want to lose uh, with a session to spare. Uh, I luckily done that, and then tonight I came in and put a bit of pressure on Mark, but it was to no avail. But it, it must have been a, a good match to watch. But obviously, I'm disappointed. But as I said, every credit, brilliant champion. Brilliant. He is indeed, and so are you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Joel and Kean and Connor and Daddy, world champion at 43 years of age. <laughs> yeah. How does that sound, Mark? It's unbelievable. I mean, 12 months ago, I wasn't even you. And uh, to come out and, and just to play John in the final is, uh, you know, is an experience in itself. I haven't been here for a long time. I mean, the crowd have been absolutely fantastic tonight, all the way through, really. I, I just can't believe it. 14-7 up. Expecting an onslaught from this man, you can never count him out, even in these circumstances. Yeah, you've got to expect to come back because, uh, you know, we, when, when you're 50 or 60 in front, he is the best I've ever seen at clearing up. He's in a different league. That, that includes the Sullivan Henry's different class. When he, look at the clearances he's he done against me. I was thinking, Jesus, God, I'm never going to get all the line <laughs> And, 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 uh, and I knew at the, at the end, if I didn't get enough in front, he was going to clear up again. But I'm over the moon. Did you think days like these were long gone, Mark? Absolutely gone, yeah. I, I didn't. Well, one year last year, I watched it in a, in a caravan on a, having some beers. But uh, oh, it was great. I mean, you know, I've got to say a big thank my sponsor, Ron Skinner, who, who sadly passed away a few months ago. So I'm sure <laughs> it sounds up there. I'm sure he'll be watching down and enjoying that. And, uh, you know, he's, been, he's been with me, not just doing well, but when I was struggling, he was still sponsoring me. And, uh, you know, big credit to him. Thanks very much. Mark, you were 28 when you last won the title here. <laughs> <laughs> these boys weren't even born. Quite nice to show these lads that their dad's quite good, really. Well, it is just nice for him to be here. I mean, even if John would have beat me, I would have congratulated him. I'd have been sick. Obviously, I missed the pink one frame, but... I don't know where that other break came from after that because I sort of threw it away, but I made a really good break under pressure. And uh, what can I say? Over the moon. Joe. <laughs> I think... I think we owe a debt of gratitude to the lady that's on the screen now. Joe, your wife, she was the lady. Here she comes. Come on in, Joe. Because you are the one who persuaded this man not to hang up the queue, but to keep going last year. And this is a family snap for the album here. What would you like to say to this woman, the woman who kept you going? Uh -huh. Yeah, she convinced me. Last year I was seriously thinking about giving up, and she, um, she basically said, I can't stick when you have 24 hours a day. So <laughs> you, you, you'll have to keep going. And uh, I, I can't believe 12 months. I've got to thank Steve Feeney as well. He's helped me out so much. My game was... Crap, really, 12 months ago, and now it's, it's, it's in pretty good shape, and I'm looking forward to the next season. Kian, you have been... 
this man here. This man, Kian, has been the lucky charm for your dad. What do you think of the way he's won the world title this evening, Kian? Well, he played good against. Oh, what was the first person you played? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Robertson. Jimmy, Jimmy Robertson. Robertson. He played. You're supposed to good be in school. Against him. Yeah, yeah. I, suppose, I was in school then. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in school for um, the milk Robertson. I wasn't in school for a week just so I could watch him play. <laughs> well, I think. You're supposed to be bad. <laughs> I think. You're going to be excused, don't you worry. You have been the man who's yeah. kept this fella on track. Now, I just wonder whether you are going to make good your promise to, um, to bear all at the media conference afterwards. Yeah. Mark, would you like me to hold your waistcoat? As, as, as long as uh, Barry Ewan is not going to fight me or discipline me, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to do it. I'll have to do it. We'll look forward to that. You can see that on the BBC Sport website. But this man has just won the title, a third title, 15 years after his last. He's going to pick up a cheque for £425,000, and that's going, to keep him, that's going to keep him in kebabs for a very, very long time. Your champion, Mr Mark Williams. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your presentation party, Mark Stebbings, Managing Director of Betfred, and Barry Hearn, Chairman of World Snooker. <laughs> the runner-up, deserving a giant reception, receiving a cheque for £180,000 and the silver medal. He is a class act. He's John Higgins. <laughs> years on from his second victory, receiving a cheque for £425,000, the trophy and the title 2018 Betfred World Snooker Champion, Mark Williams. What a final, what a championship. Congratulations and commiserations to John Higgins for a gallant effort. Back-to-back -back finals for the Scots. He'll still have to settle for four world titles for now, but who knows, given his form, John, and given the way that he came back there, who's to say he can't come back and win it for a fifth time? Uh, absolutely not. And two absolute titans of the Green Bays, two brilliant, brilliant competitors, and how Mark Williams found that after the barrage from John Higgins tonight is incredible, and especially when he should have won it the first time, didn't get the pink. To find that break in the next frame is something very special, but he's a very special player. They're both very special players. They are A-star graduates of the class of 92, and they have underscored that a million times over this evening. That's right. The temperament that both players is unquestionably just so high, and uh, it remains to be seen how long they stay in the game at the top. It's not easy staying uh, into your, well into your 40s, but it's going to get tough for the young players because the older players are not going away. They're getting lots of match practice, and with these lads around, you know, there's not going to be so many pickings around if these two players keep this form up. Are we likely, in all honesty, though, is this, is this a blip? Is this an anomaly? Are we likely to see a lineup like this in a Crucible final once again? Yeah, why not? These two could be in another final again, the way they played through this tournament. Absolutely. Listen, when you're class and you can still play the game, and obviously Mark Williams has been helped by Steve Feeney, he mentioned him, he's found the middle of the cue ball, his cue action is just 
miles better than it has been. He's, he's, he's won three tournaments prior to winning the World Championship this year. He can be back again. Why can't he? He's the most consistent player of the entire season. It's been fantastic. Well, there's been some great performances by the older players this season. Mm. I think it just probably inspires the younger players to sort of achieve even greater things. Somewhere down the line, they will do. So there's Lee Walker and Steve Feeney. Steve Feeney That's Steve there, Feeney, yeah. the man on the right. It's the me. man who's been at the heart of the transformation in his career. His Q action. And indeed, his attitude towards the game, and it's proved brilliantly beneficial. And here they all come. This is Team Williams, Team Float, I think we're calling them, actually. <laughs> and congratulations to them.